Have you heard? Kushkan is headed to Tampa this August 6th and 7th. Network with more than 7,500 hemp and cannabis professionals. Sample products from more than 300 brands and take in over 70 educational sessions. Do you work in cannabis or hemp? Kushkan Tampa is the only place you can meet directly with the nation's largest distributors and retailers. Get tickets and learn more at kush.com forward slash kushkan. Plus, listeners of this show can save 50% on tickets with promo code podcast. Again, that's kush.com forward slash kushkan. See you there. Again, we're not in the business, uh, even though a lot of us were former law enforcement agents, uh, we're not in the business of shutting somebody down. No. We want to educate. We want to support. We want to show people how to do it the right way. And we make money when they make money. You know, we're not a flat fee business. We we essentially work off of the volume of commerce that our banks and our cannabis businesses generate. So we want everybody to be more profitable. From the PodConnect studios, high in the Rockies at the beautiful Beaver Creek Resort, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today on MJ Bulls, we are joined by Scott Solomon, the CEO of Operational Security Solutions. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dan. Glad to be here. Well, I really appreciate you joining us today. Operational Security Solutions is a full-spectrum risk management company providing cash management and financial solutions, including secure cash, transportation, logistics, and depository services. And I want to talk about everything today, but I thought... Maybe to get things rolling, you can kind of give us an update on the status of the SAFE Act in Congress. I'm not sure if you have any insight. And also, when do you think the financial world will finally start treating cannabis companies like every other business? Absolutely. And, and that's a, a common question that we get, especially the OSS leadership, is, is what's happening with the SAFE Banking Act? And I, I think we're seeing it now for the sixth time going to the Senate. It, it seems like it just continues to stall. From our end, I, I guess from just a support service is the way that we look at it. It's something that we, we strongly support. We want that act to pass or, or some form of it or another act that's equally as uh, helpful uh, to these uh, cannabis businesses that seem to, to struggle and they don't yeah. get a fair shot at legitimate financial services. But in in our honest opinion, I I think it's still going to stall. I I still think that there will be hurdles, that we have the need for more bipartisan support. And I think we need a few more success stories in in various states. We need to see uh, strong commerce. We need to see positive tax revenue and some more of the good stories to get that national attention and, and to move it beyond a, a stigma. I hate to confirm what you're saying, but that's what we're hearing as well. It's it's unfortunate, but and what it does is it creates a situation in cannabis businesses where there's a lot of cash on hand, which is very dangerous for the business and the employees and the customers. How do you help? cannabis companies create a safer environment for their employees or customers, everybody? OSS started as a security company. And to just briefly overview that original start, we are a group of former law enforcement and military and federal regulators that came together and and, and saw a, a strong need to help this burgeoning market, at least to make it more safe. And that started with hardening facilities, with providing video security measures, Mm -hmm. to coming up with policies and procedures and and checking off that box when a a cannabis business wanted to say that they had a a safety program or a security program. But it didn't take too long for us to realize that when we actually listened to those MRB or cannabis-related businesses to find out that their biggest problem was access to banking. They were forced into a cash intensive business. They are heavily regulated. They are overtaxed. They have inordinate fees and they have to deal with all of this with big piles of cash. And so 
we looked at how can we support secure cash in transit or CIT. And so we developed a new business vertical focusing on a model that really, if an easy way for me to describe it, is that we provide executive protection for cash. <laughs> so we're not like a traditional armored car company that has big paramilitary vehicles and people jumping out with machine guns and scaring small children. We have a discrete model. We want to provide a discrete level of service. But the key with us is that we want to partner with a financial institution. So that's really our main business partner. But then we want to bridge that gap between the financial institution and the MRB with compliance. So we put a, a huge focus on internal training. We have the same BSA, AML training and expertise that our partners at the banks have. And it's in our best interest. It's in the financial institution's best interest and the MRB's best interest if we keep that account open. So we do everything and anything possible to help both sides understand the rules that we have to play by and how we can do it in a compliant fashion. You mentioned you're working with financial institutions. Now that is interesting to me. Would, would that be considered those are banks or credit unions? Is that what you would describe as your financial institutions that you refer to? Yes. And, and we, we loosely put them into to three categories. Unfortunately, and one of the things that the Safe Banking Act is trying to address, we can't deal with international banks. We can't deal with national banks or those banks that have FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance, because that's, that's a, tax a taxpayer supported industry. And we don't have 100% taxpayer support. So we can't rely on those national systems to support this niche industry. So that means that we're not forced, but we're put in a position where we deal with state chartered banks. So state chartered banks, when you have uh, cannabis legalized at a state level, they can engage in that commerce. There's also okay. the second batch would be credit unions. So again, credit unions are membership based. So they have a board and a membership that determines who they can support, who they can engage and serve as members. And, and cannabis is one of those industries. And then the third would be payment processors. And, and so these would be sometimes local or state based, but often multi-state operators that in most cases have an electronic or a web based offering that enables a cannabis business to legally and in a compliant and transparent fashion pay their bills. Because mm -hmm. it, it stinks when you have to walk around with duffel bags full of cash to pay your taxes or to pay your suppliers <laughs> or to pay your employees. So there, there are e-based systems that provide those opportunities. And, and we work with all three of those groups. Well, I think you mentioned that keeping the company operational is really essential. And it's probably pretty easy if they don't know what they're doing, or even if they do, to make a mistake from a compliance standpoint. Is that one of the services that you provide is helping them stay on top of all the changing regulations and maintaining their compliance? Absolutely. So going back to our early days as just security consultants, we actually helped cannabis businesses prepare their application for a bank account. It's loosely called onboarding. Mm -hmm. And so the financial institution needs to go through EDD or enhanced due diligence. They have to go through a process called know your customer, KYC. And it's essentially like putting together a comprehensive term paper. So all aspects of the ownership of the company, of their business plan, of where they want to operate, how they will set up their facilities, the, the suppliers that they want to work with, and, and how they manage and report both cannabis sales as well as where the money comes in and where the money goes. Mm -hmm. So we do have the ability to, to work closely with them on the front end. But once a cannabis business has an open account with a financial institution, we can support that through uh, site visits. So we have a very strong compliance program, uh, a field audit survey program or FAS program, as we call it, 
in which, whether it's at the behest of the cannabis business or of the financial institution, we know the regulations, we know the requirements of FinCEN, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and we can actually go to the facilities, we can observe and report, we can interview personnel, we can document compliance. And if there are weak areas, we can work with the business and the financial institution to shore those up. Uh, again, we're not in the business, uh, even though a lot of us were former law enforcement agents, uh, we're not in the business of shutting somebody down. No, I mean, We want to educate. We want to support. We want to show people how to do it the right way. And we make money when they make money. You know, we're not a flat fee business. We, we essentially work off of the volume of commerce that our banks and our cannabis businesses generate. So we want everybody to be more profitable. Lift the drinks, join the party, skip the hangover. Created by hemp and cannabis lovers, Lifted is an amazingly tasty non-alcoholic beverage created to improve any evening in or weekend out. Lifted is 100% hemp cannabis, 100% consistent, 100% of the time, and it can be shipped anywhere in the U.S. You just add ice or mix it with your favorite beverage. Check out at LiftedDrinks.com, that's L-Y-F, teddrinks.com and listeners of the show get an additional 20% off at checkout with discount code radio. Remember you must be 21 or over to join the party and skip the hangover with lifted drinks. So far in this conversation, we, we've talked about being locations harden their security. We've talked about transportation. You called it executive protection for their cash. We've talked about the consulting work that you've done. There, and I know we're just scratching the surface of all the services that you provide, but what does the next 12 months look like for your company? Where would you like to see your company over the next 12 months? This is a very busy time for OSS. The main reason uh, that, that we are more busy is that we've just opened by coastal operations. So we, we were founded in California, and, and I think that right now we're the, the number three cash and transit business as far as size and operational expanse in the state of California. But we also service Nevada, Oregon, and Washington states. But here recently, we planted a flag in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As I think people uh, in this industry know, we, we see booming markets in Pennsylvania, but more specifically in New Jersey. In New York, Maryland is a booming market. And, and Philadelphia provides us a more economical location where we can service all of those businesses, but we have easy access to the Federal Reserve Banks in Philadelphia and in New York. We think that once we're established in Philadelphia, we will be able to move up into New England. Of course, the Massachusetts and uh, Connecticut markets are, are, are really booming. And then down the eastern seaboard to the big markets in, in Florida and, and some of the southern states. Uh, and of course, over time, it's always based on uh, a revenue model, but over time, we would want to fill that in and connect the coast. That's our, our main goal from uh, a business expansion perspective. But we also know that cash isn't going to be the only medium for commerce in this industry. So uh, we've put a lot of effort into developing business verticals in which we partner with smart safe companies. So smart safes are equipment that go into businesses that help protect the customer and the employees. So cash goes in, but it communicates with us. It communicates with a bank. It's secure in that facility. So you don't have open cash registers. We communicate with those smart safes and know when we need to go and do a cash pickup so they don't have too much cash on hand. Wow. We also know that there are electronic measures out there in which you can have cashless payments. We know that there are also a lot of hot topics related to the fact that Visa and other national and international card processors don't want to touch this industry. But there are online methods that are compliant in which businesses and customers can, whether it's through blockchain and ACH and, and other electronic measures, 
exchange funds in a very transparent fashion and remain compliant. So we, we know that there are a lot of these other measures on the horizon, and, and we're trying to stay agile and adapt with them as they come online. That's really exciting. There's a lot of opportunity in this industry in all sectors, but the opportunities within your sector, they really seem exciting. Before we let you go, will you be needing to raise capital in order to fund some of this expansion that you've just talked about? Again, that, that's arguably one of the, the hottest topics within OSS. Fortunately, OSS was founded by a small group of principals, and we've been able to fund all operations internally. So we've raised our own capital. Mm-hmm. We have absolutely zero outside or leveraged debt. Wow. So it's a, a cash positive operation, which is very unique, I think, in, in our industry. <laughs> very unique. And we're trying to do this, this growth or this expansion in a cash positive mindset. So right now, we don't have the need for external support, but that could change. Uh, That could change in a day, in a month, definitely within this year, because we try to respond to demand. And if we have strong demand from a large multi-state operator or from a financial institution that comes to us, we have 20 or 100 new accounts or new locations, or we have massive volume that needs serviced, we will want to be responsive to that. And I think that would create an opportunity where we would want to partner or look at a a second round of funding, a way that we could be responsive as quickly as possible and not miss that opportunity to capture some market growth. Well, I'll tell you, we'll have the links to operational security solutions in the show notes. So whether you're a company that needs to harden their facility, improve their security, or investor, maybe you want to convince Scott to let them participate in their growth, just click the links in the show notes, and I'm sure somebody from the OSS team will be happy to talk to you. Scott, we just really scratched the surface on this today, but so let's plan to have you back on again maybe in six months, and we can get an update as to how you're doing on the East Coast. But I really appreciate you being on the show today. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Dan. I really enjoyed it and look forward to speaking with you and everyone else again. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast, The Talking Hedge, and newest member on PodCon X. So come on over and check out The Talking Hedge. We talk about business news, interviews, investments, events, all that stuff. So come nerd out with me over at The Talking Hedge. You can find me at thetalkinghedgepodcast.com or on all your favorite podcast platforms. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out.